<laughs> Hello, my name is now Lydia Lorette. Um, I recently got married, six months on Monday. Ooh, yeah, I keep wanting to call myself Lydia Dunn. I'm like, oh, no, I'm Lydia Lorette. Um, what am I? Oh, I'm, I live in Leithfield. Um, yeah, I'm a new wife. I'm a teacher aide. Um, super proud Catholic. Yeah, and I don't yeah. really know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you're obviously, like, I've been interviewing religious sisters so far. Nice. You're obviously not a religious I'll sister. I'll be wearing a headscarf. I'm not a religious <laughs> sister. <laughs> It's an interesting outfit. Yeah, there you go. So, I, I do. I dress. It's just, just always been me. I am <laughs> scarves, heads for like years. And everyone's like, are you like a religious? <laughs> no, I'm not. Sadly not. But no, I'm not. But I but do. You, you have did enough. discern for a year. Yeah. I did. Yeah, actually next door. So I go to <laughs> next door, the community, the Beatitudes, a great community. And I, yeah, I did discern with them for a year. And I have a real, even though I am married, I have such a love for the religious life. I like your thing. I was like telling my husband, like, it's so great. I do. I, I have a real passion, I think, for it, for discernment and for, yeah, religious life. So I did, I actually discerned with the community, the Beatitudes. I was living with them for about half a year in the community, kind of the pre number thing we're talking about. Um, but I'd been discerning with them since 2020. Um, I lived in Nelson about five hours away. So yeah, I kind of was a, not a proper candidate. I was a candidate, but they were treating it with flexibility because I'm a new Catholic. Uh, mm. So, yeah, that was me. And do you regret, like, trying religious life? Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> well, everyone says, you know, they're like, oh, Lydia, you know, you got snatched away, you know, because I was, <laughs> I was in the comic where I'm like, my husband lived next door and not one bit. I actually, you know, everyone's like, do you regret it? Why didn't you choose it? And I think, honestly, it was the best thing I did. One, for me, if I didn't discern, if I didn't give everything, and if I didn't let everything go in the car and drive down here, I would never have met Saviour. I would never in a million years move to the button, middle of nowhere, sorry, <laughs> and then to the middle of nowhere to, to marry Xavier. But also I know that just for me being married, I can now say, you know, I tried it. I gave religious life a go, and I really did. Like, I went... <laughs> was like, whoa. I yeah. met, um, I met you, like Hearts of Flame, the year yeah. before, I was, and you were like, really? <laughs> I was full hog, and that is me, like, very much my personality, I am very full hog, <laughs> like, and that, to be honest, that's been a little bit of, it's been quite a whiplash year, you know, I, I was there, and then suddenly, it, it felt very quick, but it felt right, you know, the Lord was so in every single, every single step of the way, but even still, you know, I kind of rebound, because I'm kind of like, Oh, I, I, I suddenly live next door to the sisters, and it was a really big step for me. Um, everyone's always like, I was thinking about marriage, and then I was drew to the religious, religious life, you know, all the vocation stories I watched, but there was me like, I don't want to be married. I only <laughs> want to be a nun. I want to be a hermit. You know, I kept telling my superior who was there, I was like, so how can I be a hermit within this community? And they're like, that's not what we do. I'm like, no, no, but how can I be a hermit? Um... But honestly, I, and I, yeah, marriage wasn't on my radar at all, but I needed to go, for me, I needed to walk through, you know, I was thinking about what I was going to say in this interview, and the biggest thing was, the Lord has been teaching me how to love, because a vocation is about how you love and how you receive love, and I was there, and then, you know, wanting to, I loved the prayer and the daily life, and I wanted to give my whole entire life to Jesus, I do, because I'm like, that is why I was made, and I, Oh, I just love the religious life. I do. I still have such a love for it. You know, people are like, oh, do you kind of hate nuns now? Like, <laughs> no, I love them so much. I love everything about the religious life. And, um, but I felt my time personally, my conversion and my, my discernment with a few different communities and particularly with the sisters, um, with the, of the community, the Beatitudes, just, I just felt like the Lord was just actually just opening my heart to actually be able to receive love because... I didn't admit to myself, but I never allowed, you know, I'd have my family and things, but I never had a boyfriend. I never allowed someone to love me, truly love me. Um, and I'd never actually truly loved someone. And that was whole, you know, I <laughs> had a bit of like, ah! <laughs> moment in the community when I realized that, you know, when one of the sisters came to me and said, Lydia, you realize there's a man who's like <laughs> liking you. And I was like, what, sister? What? And I had this whole mental breakdown. Um, but... And I remember like, Lord, this is wrong, this is wrong, I can't, I'm a nun, you know. And the Lord was like, well, one, you're not yet, but two, he said, Lily, this is not wrong. And I just, it was so many things, but realising that I could 
what actually made my heart open, even though I wanted to be a freaking hermit. Like I do, like, <laughs> the Lord, like bless me. I just do, I, and I, you know, I want to be, you know, I love the, the kind of my, my mind loves all of that. The Lord's like, Lydia, what does your heart? And honestly, the thought of being married to my husband, Xavier, is just like, I could have been like, really Lord, I could do that. Like, because that's what I wanted. Like, oh my heart, I just caught like a little flower. It was just, at this moment, because even though I was discerning with the religious sisters, my heart was like rigid and locked. I wasn't receiving love in the way that the Lord was like, Lydia, <laughs> I wanted to do it differently. Um, <laughs> and so, so yeah, so I did it for a year and it was, and it was, so I made that decision about six months into my living with the sisters. And you know, what? it was so good because I had all these, I am a very, uh, I romanticize a lot in my head. Um, I, do, I remember you writing, like we email yeah. each other. Yeah, yeah. Right. Honestly, <laughs> you put up this girl, like what? I do. And I'm, I'm quite, <laughs> you just know, like you probably put some of the emails, she's like, she's a lot. And I think I am, I'm very imaginative and romanticizing and very much, you know, everything's epic. And so I was, I had that kind of, and the Lord used that to capture me. You know, he used, I would never have one become a re, um, I actually converted to Catholicism <laughs> in 2019 and wanted to become a nun. And he used, you know, I just, the lives of the saints, the, the, uh, you know, the liturgy, the liturgical calendar, I just, you know, art, uh, you know, religious art and things, it just captures me. It just, I don't know what it does. It's like, I'm like, Lord, I was designed for this. And so even just religious life from the aesthetics to the, the way it is, it does, it just captures me. And so I was really like i came in to this you know and i was living like in nelson being like it's gonna be so perfect like when i get to the community it's gonna be all what my wild dreams are you know it's gonna be amazing i'm gonna be on a prayer i'm gonna be so holy um and i got there the first day i was up on top of a ladder picking pears and i have to throw <laughs> pears down i'm like this is not religious life i'm meant to be like doing holy things or, you know and I, i'm sorry that was me i was naive and Honestly, I just kind of a bit of a ball in a china store. You know, I think the sisters were a bit like, whoa, this is a lot. Because I was, and I was constantly told off. But anyway, um, it was, yeah, I was, you know, I'm like this <laughs> in a convent. And I was like, ah! <laughs> but um, they were really good. But, you know, I, but it was so good because what it did, you know, I had a lot of preconceived notions in my head. Um, and I went there and lived in the life. And it's not that, you know, it's beautiful. But it was not a lot what I was imagining. Um, and, you know, even now, you know, as I was going through, and I was having to address those things, you know, I, because I suddenly was like, Lord, I'm not, I'm struggling with the amount of people. You know, I was like, Lord, I, I'm, I'm quite, believe it or not, I'm quite introverted. And um, uh, I w was really struggling with living a community life. But I thought, I was like, Lord, I love, I love the thought of having a structured timetable and living with brothers and sisters. Um, I love that. But I was actually really struggling with it, um, just being exhausted the whole time and not able to, um, and actually having to, to face the reality of what religious life is. I mean, like, Lord, is this actually working for me instead of the romanticized versions of what I thought it was going to be? Um, so no, I don't regret it. Not at all, because I've learned so much and had such a love for them. And I actually now live next door, <laughs> so I'm like, and, you know, and I still see them. And I, they are, they're my family. You know, I, I really felt, you know, when I was getting married, I was, uh, when I was dating Xavier and engaged, I was sort of living with the community, and I felt like I had <laughs> my family, which was some French sisters, and then his family, and so they are, they're very special to me. And I like the point you made about like our head versus heart. Like sometimes, oh. especially in our world today, it's very easy to um get caught up in what we think yeah. or and what we like what we think or even feel we yeah. should do but actually yeah. god works through the heart <laughs> oh my word he does and i'll be honest with you i you know i want to say now that i'm married i like no like i'm like my spiritual journey is like i feel so good <laughs> at it and i'm like da, da, da. but you know what actually i feel like i am back to freaking basics like ground level and I know I'm a, yeah, I'm a new Christian I'm only a few years in I would say you know of praying and actually walking with the Lord but that is for me and I feel like this is something that's been coming along in my prayer life is like Lily, Lily there's so many things you think should be happening you think you should be doing and how you should feel and it was also hard I know I got into a trap of how do I explain it like 
you can read so much about discernment or you can read so much about religious life like i i'm like the ultimate like i must research and prep everything so i was reading all the material on how to discern for religious life or how to discern for marriage and kind of wanting to stay in that space of reading all this information and doing and kind of nourishing my brain in it all but i really felt the lord said no no it's time to stop and yeah like stop thinking so much <laughs> I know I feel like that would be my thing um, forever and more. Like, just get out of your head and into your heart. What is the reality? You know, my prayer is just, you know, and I'd be like, Lord, what do you want for me today? And it's a lot of the time it's, I love you. Be present <laughs> and live today. And, and I'm like, what do you mean, Lord? That's so lame. <laughs> and I'm like, just actually like, where's your heart at? Because, you know, I don't know, for me, it has to be about relationship. And I got well, you know, I was like, wow, her relationship with God is amazing. And then I sometimes get a bit carried away with her relationship. Oh, and it'll be even better when I'm a nun because I'll be able to be super spiritual and then we'll have a relationship. But one time I was just like, Lord, just like, be present. I'm here now in the relation, in the discernment, in the, in the, you're not quite in a box yet. You don't quite know. I'm actually here now. And oh, it's just so, for me, I just have to keep reminding myself that because I live in that. Oh, okay, when I'm married, and it, it doesn't stop. Oh, when I'm married, <laughs> when we have the house, when I have a kid, oh, when I have about five kids, you know, when I have a big Catholic family, and all these things, and the Lord's like, that's not, whoa, 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 bring it back. I'm here today, and you, you know, with no children yet, and just newly married, I'm with you here today, present. I love you, <laughs> be present, <laughs> and, you know, be mindful of where you are today, and I'm like, ah. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Sorry, my life. Yeah. Do you have any advice for young people who might be discerning um, religious life? Oh man. <laughs> I get annoyed at people who say they're discerning, but have not done actually anything about it. And I think I don't know. People were always like, "Lydia, you're so amazing. You're doing things." It didn't feel amazing to me. Like all I did was I was like, "All right, Lord, I give you." It got to a point, you know, with prayer. And let's say if you're wanting to discern religious life, um, just do it. Like, just give yourself, you know, especially if you're young, if you, like, give yourself a month and say, all right, I'm going to actually discern. So if it's religious life, okay, I'm going to actually just, Lord, show me, where do I need to go? Like, as I was ready to board a train plane to Jamaica, and they were like, no, sorry, you can't come. <laughs> so, um, and that was, but I, again, I got, and sometimes I think there's a time and a place for that, but I think especially in our culture when it is so hard, like we live in a culture, especially in New Zealand, our Catholic culture is like, it, it's, oh, it's easy, you kind of just discern and everything. People are too scared to actually, well, it's kind of a bit embarrassing when people say, Lydia, what are you doing? And you know, all my friends were at uni and I was like, oh, I'm actually going to a convent. And I lost friends over that. You know, my friends said, oh, no, nah. okay. I actually lost all but one friend. And that was really hard. And my one friend who did stay, she actually been with me the whole journey, it's amazing. But I did, I lost, and I would cry all the time <laughs> about, you know, because I, like, I have no friends. I was like, Lord, you're isolating me. But actually, if I didn't, if I just stayed in where I was in Nelson, being like, maybe I could be a nun, maybe I'll date, or, I don't know, I just feel like we are in a time when young people need to just be like, Take a step and look, hey, if you spend two or three months discerning, you go to maybe two or three different religious orders, try it for a week or two. And if you realize, this is so not for me, you did it anyway. You, like, you just saved time. <laughs> like, I don't know, and maybe that's poor advice, but I would recommend that. But firstly and primarily is prayer. You know, I say my conversion happened in 30 seconds because I was not walking with Jesus and I got the headspace out. And I did a 30 minute silent sit, no, sorry, 30 second. It was like one minute of like walk, 30 seconds of walking you in, and then you had 30 minutes of silence. And in that 30 seconds, so I've mixed seconds and minutes again, 30 seconds of silence, I, I tasted, it was my first experience of prayer and contemplative prayer for me. Um, and it changed my life. And I say that's so my conversion was 30 seconds and that grew into one minute to three minutes to five minutes to 10 minutes. Now I need 20 minutes a day or else my life just falls apart. Um, and so I would say prayer, prayer, 
100% every day. Make it, make it the, your foundation of your life. Like start, you know, any vocation, whether it's marriage, singlehood, religious life, has to be built on prayer because that's, you know, our God is a relational God. And if we're not spending time in that relationship, like how do you build a friendship? And that's really, and I think for me, I thought I could get away with it, with not. But the more and more I realize, well, I fell into the trap of, oh, I'm not a religious life. I don't need to pray. And then that got me into trouble. So um, just with, I was like, Lord, my life, I just, I, I, I lose that zest for life when there's no prayer. Because um, that's how God moves. And that's how God touches our hearts. So if you are asking, and not just, okay, I'm going to do intensive prayer just so I know what to <laughs> discern. Lord, to foster relationship. Lord, how can I, how do you see me? You know, just learning to see yourself as a child of God, because we've got so much wounds, so many wounds, and so much stuff. And, oh, God is just so good. So just pray. Pray every day, and then be like, all right, I'm going to try something. <laughs> so that's what I was saying. Act. Honestly, prayer and action, because I always think of that, um, Teresa of Avila, is that Christ has no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Um, it was meant to a song. But I would always remember that because, and I really felt the Lord say, just like, thank you for like doing something. Like, I was, or maybe that's, I know that's very much my personality. I just very much am that person. But I do, I encourage people. And I remember being a bit annoyed at people. <laughs> I'm not annoyed, I was just kind of like, there's nothing different about me. I am not special. I am just probably a bit stupid in the sense of I just don't think about things <laughs> before I do them but I think there's sometimes there's a time and a place for sitting and waiting and then you just have to act you just have to go just just do it because that's how momentum starts um and you will know and the Lord will lead you if you're open yeah it's too easy just to sit on the back burner or on the back foot and be like oh look I'll pray you know a quick grace before dinner <laughs> or you know I'll go to mass sometimes I'm like no Start off, make sure you go to Mass every Sunday. And if you have the blessing of going to daily Mass, it's a bop. If you can, but I know that's not feasible for everyone, but prayer every day, that's what I would say. Yeah. Uh, last question. Yes. Um, <laughs> who is, I've been asking all the religious sisters as I go around, um, who is God to you? If you had to kind of summarize it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I want to say he's every, he's my everything. You know, I have a husband who he is my everything too. But I just you know he's his father, he's beloved, he's creator, he's ah oh, Protestant in me, best friend. But he's <laughs> but also at the same time he's he's mystery. He's at the same time I don't know him. At the same time I I feel like he knows me so well, like so many things. But I would say he's my everything. He's my he's my life. And I just mean that it's my, ever, like, to think if I did, I see God everywhere, you know, I live, if I think, if I didn't have that, if he wasn't there, I'd be like, life wouldn't exist. <laughs> like, I wouldn't be able to fathom, so I, yeah, I guess I would say that. It's probably a bit lame, but. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, yes. <laughs> is it St. Augustine, St. Ignatius, one of the two, yeah. um, who says our hearts are restless until they rest in God? 100%. Mm -hmm. And I, that's what I would be for anyone discerning, you know, you will... <sighs> take that to heart you you will find your rest and your peace in god not in okay oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so this one will be like legit like you're gonna find peace when you surrender your life to god and that will lead to your vocation for me i so many times i go about it the other way when i am a nun i will be happy or when i am married i live like that for so long in my head but it's not it's the other way you will find mm -hmm. peace today in your state of life now when you surrender it to god because I think the world often says, like, you need to have a great job, you need to have a degree, you yeah. need to have money, like, yeah. um, all these things, you need to be really successful. 100%. And our worth is in what we do. Oh, but, yeah. it's in God. It <laughs> is. And you will find us, like, amen, because I was in that trap, and I still am. I was going on, I'm going to be such a good nun. I was, I'm going to be the best nun ever. Like, I'm going to be so holy and, like, so amazing at being a nun. But again, because it was that, still that mindset of, I will be... I will move up the ranks or things and I just felt the Lord said let's strip it back you're not all of those things Lydia like again back to the heart God wants us to flourish in this life like not just survive not just get by you know if you're living 
you know, how long I just lived kind of just getting by. I was exhausted, you know, just doing the things I thought I was meant to do, like going to school, going to uni. And I was like, I don't actually want to look like this. And the Lord's like, you don't have to. Like, you know, life doesn't have to be what everyone else around you is living it. You know, if you want a life full of life and peace and joy and the fruits of the Holy Spirit, it comes through prayer and that will then lead to your vocation. And know that like all of heaven is rooting for you. I think sometimes I remember feeling so isolated in my journey because um, I, was, I became a Catholic and you know, my family were not and I had to move away from my family and it was really isolating for me. Uh, actually, if you realize all of heaven is rooting for you, like you've got this, we have this crowd of saints rooting for us. Also like people are like the things that you're doing, like realizing that there are other women who have lived this, who are wanting to do it. Um, it's like you're not alone in this and don't, you know, I think the world's going to make you feel isolated. As soon as you take that step out of the boat onto the water, you're going to be buffeted by so much stuff. You may lose friends, your family may think you're weird, but it's so worth it. It's so worth it. I wouldn't change anything. Honestly, wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs>